I have got a bone to pick with everybody that has had an issue with the coaching of Taylor Jenkins of late, especially since the injury to John Morant, the issues with Desmond Bain, basically since the entire starting lineup that this guy was supposed to have to begin the season went down for a variety of reasons. I have some grievances that I want to point out to you in the wake of a Grizzlies loss in New York to the Knicks, a competitive Grizzlies loss when it shouldn't have been competitive. I'm Joe Molinax. This is Locked On Grizzlies. Let's lock in. You are Locked On Grizzlies, your daily Memphis Grizzlies podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to this Wednesday edition of Locked On Grizzlies. I am your host, Joe Molinax. Flying solo on this episode, DeMichael Cole of the Commercial Appeal there in Memphis, Tennessee, Memphis Grizzlies beat writer for that publication, my co-host doing his beat writer duties. So I have you on this Wednesday episode of the podcast, wherever you're checking us out, whether it's on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, literally wherever you get your podcast, I, and I know DeMichael as well, appreciate it. You being here. This episode of Locked On Grizzlies is brought to you by Game Time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Locked On Grizzlies is a proud member of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team each and every day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts. Again, like, comment, rate, review, subscribe, YouTube, Apple, Spotify, wherever you check out podcasts. Hopefully you're an everydayer at this point, checking us out every time an episode drops. But if not, smash that subscribe button. Let us know how we're doing in the comments. Continue to make Locked On Grizzlies a podcast that is growing and a podcast that is part of your NBA and Memphis Grizzlies consumption. And while we're talking about consumption, I need to I need to loosen up a little bit here. I need to ah uh ooh, need to loosen the lips to get these hot takes off. When it comes to Taylor Jenkins, because there are some among you, dear listener, dear viewer, dear ex responder, dear wherever on the internet and in the interwebs you interact with the Memphis Grizzlies, you have almost undoubtedly seen, whether it's our comment section over on Grizzlies Twitter, Grizzlies X, whatever you want to call it, people criticizing Taylor Jenkins. And I want to stress something Taylor Jenkins is not above reproach, Taylor Jenkins is not immune. To criticism. Taylor Jenkins is not somebody, the head coach of the Memphis Grizzlies, that should simply get away with not being questioned. That's not the point of this conversation, how we're starting off this episode of Locked on Grizzlies. And we'll talk about the trade deadline tomorrow. It's trade deadline eve. I know that. Vince Williams Jr. looking more and more like he could not just be a rotation player on a good basketball team that the Grizzlies hope to be in the future. Maybe a starting caliber player. We'll get to that. And the players deserve credit, as I said in Locked On Now on Tuesday night. The Grizzlies players deserve credit for making that 18-1 to run in the fourth quarter of their loss to the Knicks. It eventually wound up the way that just about everybody thought it would, a double-digit defeat at the hands of New York. But what did DeMichael Cole and I say? If Vince Williams Jr. were to play, the Grizzlies were going to cover that 12.5 spread, and that's exactly what they did. But while Vince Williams Jr. had some success, and again, we're going to talk more about that, Jalen Brunson still went off, especially in the first half. You still had Knicks players that had a lot of success, and the talent gap between the two teams was very evident. But what wasn't evident was the Grizzlies quitting. And what wasn't evident was Memphis not understanding their assignments on both ends of the ball. And what wasn't evident was a roster of players that didn't want to play or didn't want to be there. They were in Madison Square Garden. Of course they wanted to play, Joe. They're playing for their NBA careers. I'll give you the latter more than I'll give you the former. But I'm also going to tell you that they don't do that unless Taylor Jenkins is a darn good basketball coach. And we've had the trial of Taylor Jenkins here on these uh, podcast waves. We've talked about, is Taylor Jenkins a good basketball coach? And DeMichael Cole and I settled on having to see this team when they were at full strength, the vision of what they were supposed to be, which we saw for, what, nine games? 
when John Morant played, when Marcus Smart played, they were six and three. Pretty good basketball team. The injury bug hasn't just bit them, it has eaten them alive. What do you expect a basketball coach to do when you are starting two guys? One of which, Jacob Gilliard, who played well, is on a two-way contract. Should be with the Memphis Hustle more than he is with the Grizzlies. The other one, Trey Jemison, was literally on another team two weeks ago. And now he's a part of the Grizzlies. And again, he showed some good flashes. He stayed on the floor, had five fouls, but at least it was in 32 minutes of play. These guys are performing. They're competing. They're fighting. And you don't just chalk that up to the players. You can't. You can't judge a coach when things are going poorly. Or you can't point out a rotation issue or a missed assignment or a question about scheme in terms of leaving open open shooters. Those are all fine questions. I don't want you to think that I'm saying that he can't be criticized. But maybe we need to have a little grace, a little bit of patience, a little bit of understanding of who he is playing. Derrick Rose was the most experienced guy for the Grizzlies in this game, and he was out after 12 minutes with another injury. Another injury. What is he supposed to do? What is he supposed to do? Guys that are on rookie contracts. Santi Aldama, still on a rookie contract. Vince Williams Jr. just signed an extension that is basically a rookie contract. David Roddy, still on a rookie contract. Gigi Jackson is 19 years old. And he was second on the Grizzlies in scoring with 16 points. Oh, well, that just shows that Gigi Jackson should have been up sooner. No! It shows that they are developing these guys and they are being given opportunity in the continuity between the two sides, between the hustle and the Grizzlies is extremely impressive. And you know who helps establish that continuity? Who sets the tone? It is Taylor Jenkins. So by all means, point out when there's open shooters and they should have been closed on. Nobody was screaming that louder than DeMichael Cole and I with Rui Hachimura. Game one of the Lakers series last year? Yeah. Let's see what Rui can do. Oh, damn. He actually is able to make those threes. Let's go guard him now. Oh, we didn't make that adjustment. That's a fair criticism. Why in the world do you keep pulling out Jaron Jackson Jr. when he only has three fouls in the second half? Let him work through foul trouble. That's a fair thing to criticize. I'll have that conversation all day. But when you have those moments of frustration, you also have to look to games like Tuesday night in New York. In a situation, in a lost season, when those guys, aside from their NBA careers, which is important, but it was a random Tuesday against the Knicks in a game they weren't expected to be any good in, they clawed back. Inch by inch, piece by piece, they competed. They outkicked their coverage. They outpunched their weight class. Whatever you want to call it, whatever cliche or phrase, they got after it. And that is not an accident. That is not something that you just say is 100% on the players. It is the development system from Memphis Hustle to Memphis Grizzlies. It is the reality that this is a good development coaching staff. It is the understanding that Taylor Jenkins is a good basketball coach. Is he good enough to get this team to the NBA finals? Who knows? Who knows? I certainly don't. And you don't either because we haven't seen this team as constructed the way they're supposed to be. And we won't see it until 2024, 2025. How do they replace Steven Adams? That's a great question. We're going to have lots of time to discuss it here on Lockdown Grizzlies. This is a good basketball coach, and I think he is doing some of his very best work right now. Because in these times of adversity, when things are at their worst, that is when you see the medal of somebody as a leader of men, a leader of people, a coach that has the capacity to keep the group fighting. These Grizzlies have not laid down. They've been outmanned. They got blown out by the Boston Celtics. Destroyed. Absolutely obliterated. That did not happen on Tuesday night. That was not the case against a New York Knicks team that is playing some of its best basketball right now. They were down some guys too. No OG Ananobi. No Julius Randle. 
but it took an 18 to one run in the fourth quarter for Memphis to make this a four point game with two minutes left. The run happened. The Knicks weren't able to stop it until the end of the game. That credit belongs to Taylor Jenkins too. It goes both ways, criticism and praise. Someone else who deserves praise is Vince Williams Jr., who continues to shine when he's given the opportunity. He had a good night in New York, and we will talk about his growth and what his potential role in the future could be next here on Lockdown Grizzlies. But first, this episode of Lockdown Grizzlies is brought to you by the good folks at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whatever your speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you're always exactly finding what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your car every time or your money back. With eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home the win. Keep your ride or die whip alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to United States customers. This episode of Lockdown Grizzlies is also brought to you by Prize Picks. It is demon time on Prize Picks. You can now win up to 100 times your money. 100 times your money. You heard that right. With as little as four correct picks, you can turn $10 into $1,000. Demons and goblins are the newest and most exciting way to play a prize pick. Squares marked with red demons or green goblins get you different payouts. You can now win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. It is a blast, and it is a wonderful way to experience whatever your flavor when it comes to sports and all the fun times that involve Prize picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA. Use the code locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, that is prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA. Use the code locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. I sang the praises of Taylor Jenkins, and darn it, it was deserved. I don't regret a thing. People can yell at me on X at Joe Molinax. You can hit me up in the comments, tell me how ridiculous I am. Fine. Go for it. I'm not saying that the guy is someone that doesn't have to be criticized. I am saying that he deserves credit when the team has success. Someone else that deserves credit, of course, is Vince Williams Jr., who continues to impress in the role that he is being basically forced into. Because nobody is saying that Vince Williams Jr. should play 35 minutes and be the best player on the floor for the Memphis Grizzlies. That is not ideal in any way, shape, or form. But Vince Williams Jr. is taking the opportunity and running with it. Wasn't the most efficient shooting night for him in New York against the Knicks, but he hit three out of five threes. He had five assists. Going into the season, who in their right mind thought that Vince Williams Jr. would have the opportunity to show his ability to create for others on offense with the Memphis Grizzlies? If things went the way they were supposed to, we might have this conversation in a Memphis hustle check-in. This might be something that Michael Cole and I are like, oh, look at what Vince Williams Jr. is doing down with the hustle. Because you got to remember, he was on a two-way deal. He was on a two-way contract. He started the season in the plan, being someone that was going to spend more time in South Haven with the Memphis Hustle G League affiliate of the Grizzlies than in Memphis at FedEx Forum itself. And yet here we are, 35 minutes against the Knicks and looking often like the best player on the floor. There were flashes for Gigi Jackson. That kid's going to be special, man. 19 years old, 16 points, five rebounds. Two blocks, one steal, three stocks for the young man. 21 minutes off the bench. I like that he's still a reserve. I think that's the best use of him if he has to keep getting significant NBA minutes at this stage. He looks good. Keep riding it. Force feed those minutes to guys like Vince Williams Jr. Force feed them to guys like Trey Jamison. Jamison. Give him that opportunity, especially as a big when the Grizzlies didn't really have another available big. Give them those chances that allow for Gigi, who should be your prize development piece at this time. Let him continue to be in the most advantageous situation for him to have success. And given his defensive flaws, that's as a reserve right now, where his offensive impact can be felt the most. 
Oh, and by the way, Gigi Jackson was a plus 14 in this game, the very best plus minus on the team. Santi Aldama, he had good offensive numbers, but he didn't have it in terms of the plus minus. He was a team worst, minus 28. Gigi was extremely influential in this game. Luke Kennard hit numerous threes, three for five from beyond the arc. We'll talk more here in a minute. Was that the last time we see Luke Kennard in Memphis Grizzlies uniform? Right? Because the trade deadline is upon us. Tomorrow is the deadline. So Michael Cole will be back with me for that trade deadline special episode. And if the Grizzlies do anything that is worthy of an emergency pod, you'll hear from us on Thursday as well. Not just in the morning when our episode drops, but also in the afternoon, an emergency pod. We'll talk more about that. But was it the last time we see Luke Kennard? Was it the last time we see a guy like John Conchar, who in 26 minutes played, shot four times? Hooray! I would help John Conchar pack. Huzzah! John Conchar is such a complete player. Five points, five assists, four rebounds in 26 minutes. Super neat, I suppose. But is John Conchar on his way out? Maybe. Is David Roddy on his way out? Probably not. Roddy got what was run of the reasons in the fourth quarter, why the team got hot. It was David Roddy who helped spark that fourth quarter comeback. Roddy deserves credit for that, just like Taylor Jenkins deserves credit for that, just like Jacob Gilliard, who hit some big shots in that fourth quarter. Richmond Spider, stand up. Richmond in general, right? VCU with Vince Williams Jr. and Jacob Gilliard with Richmond. Pretty cool. Gilliard did some good things. We saw flashes from these guys. But Vince Williams Jr., if you're actually taking what you're seeing in terms of his physical ability, his length, his capacity to defend, he struggled with Jalen Brunson, but who the heck doesn't struggle with Jalen Brunson? The guy's a stud. He can score the basketball in all three facets. He has a great handle and great feel for the game offensively. Kudos to Brunson. He deserves the all-star nod and all the success he's having. Vince Williams Jr. hung with him a little bit better in the second half. And you saw the capacity to stay with numerous types of perimeter players. That translates to when this team is actually trying to be good. So Jacob Gilliard, wonderful. Trey Jemison, nice. Gigi Jackson, really impressive signs. But if we're talking about who is most likely to actually make this team better in the long term, not necessarily two or three years from now, but 2024, 2025, when we assume the Grizzlies are going to do their darndest to actually contend in the Western Conference. Vince Williams Jr. is going to give Marcus Smart a run for his money as a starter. I'm not saying that he's going to start. I think Marcus Smart hasn't done anything to lose that job. He played well more than he played poorly, and Smart was doing exactly what he was brought here to do in terms of his leadership on and off the floor. But is Vince Williams Jr. your sixth man? Maybe. Maybe he is. He's not your traditional guy in that way. He's not that microwave score. You probably still need to find that guy unless you think he's Gigi Jackson. It's possible. On a good team, Gigi in 14 minutes a game trying to get 10 points in that 14 minutes, that'd be fun to watch. It'd be fun to try. But Vince Williams Jr. has made it very clear that when this team does transition back, everybody's healthy. They make the moves that they make in the offseason. They enter 2024, 2025 with the plan to get back to the top of the Western Conference. I think Vince Williams Jr. is going to be in that conversation to have a prominent role in the rotation, if not be a starter. He's earned that. They showed that again against the New York Knicks. How do you feel about that? Do you think that we're on to something there? Is Vince Williams Jr. actually somebody that can start in front of Marcus Smart? Let us know what you think about that in the comments below. Uh, when we come back here on Lockdown Grizzlies, we are going to Look ahead to the trade deadline. I hinted at that a little bit. Uh, DeMichael and I are going to do our own preview episode on Thursday, but I do want to give my initial thoughts entering the trade deadline conversation. We'll talk about that next here on Lockdown Grizzlies. And speaking of the trade deadline, it is fast approaching. Lockdown Fantasy Basketball is your place for live reaction Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Subscribe to Lockdown Fantasy Basketball on YouTube today so you don't miss Josh Lloyd breaking down every NBA trade with analysis and insight that you can only get from the Locked On Fantasy Podcast, or Fantasy Basketball, excuse me, podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. 
This episode of Locked On Grizzlies is brought to you by Game Time. We love Game Time here at Locked On Grizzlies, or at least I do. I know DeMichael does as well. You shouldn't have to worry when buying tickets to the next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. You can see the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. It is literally easy as two taps to buy tickets within seconds. And with zone deals, you pick the section and Game Time picks the seats for big time savings. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem the code L O C K E D O N for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. When we come back here on Locked On Grizzlies, we're finishing out with a look ahead to a pretty wild and wonderful. Trade deadline, at least potentially. Stick with us here on Lockdown Grizzlies. Welcome back to Lockdown Grizzlies. I am Joe Mullinax, flying solo, your host for this episode, to Michael Cole doing his duty as a Grizzlies beat writer for the Memphis Commercial Appeal there in Memphis, Tennessee. I've covered the Grizzlies for over a decade. You're in good hands. I, you know, don't want to pat myself on the back too hard, but I think between DeMichael and I, we do a pretty good job here at Lockdown Grizzlies, and we thank you for being with us. I gave Taylor Jenkins his flowers earlier in the show and they were well-deserved. Don't get me fired up again. Don't make me go on another tangent. I'm doing my best to be disciplined and kind and moving on. Uh, Vince Williams Jr. talking about the performance of those guys against the Knicks. But the reality of the situation is, as fun as that run was, getting it down to a four-point lead with two minutes left, thinking the Grizzlies could actually pull this thing off, reality arrived. And the reality is the Memphis Grizzlies are a bad basketball team. We've talked on here on Locked On Grizzlies before. They're not bad enough to catch up with the Spurs and the Pistons and the Wizards, even the Trailblazers. They're not that bad. They're not going to be so bad to get into the place where they could have a top four pick potentially in the draft. That's very unlikely. But they're also not going to make the play. And I think after watching them play these last couple of games, even the most ardent and stubborn sympathizer for the Memphis Grizzlies hopefully can admit we're in this weird kind of purgatory, right? Not quite a play. Uh, uh, Lottery top four pick, not quite a play-in team. So what does Memphis do entering the trade deadline? First and foremost, I think you'll see a lot of activity on the day itself. I think it was Keith Smith uh, on X talking about how a lot of these trades usually go down on the day themselves. Uh, the Kevin Durant trade last year, for example, that kind of started the floodgates for the deals uh, happening. But it really is important to understand that you know, it was at Keith Smith NBA, 12 trades happened on the trade deadline day itself last year. So I think you're going to see a lot of dealings. And I think you're going to see a lot of rumors swirling around the Memphis Grizzlies as part of those deals. Why? Because they have nothing to play for except for development, except for hoping to continue to have build up a sample size of good Gigi Jackson and good Vince Williams Jr. John Conchar is a guy that could be moved. To a lesser extent, Santi Aldama, if he was rumored to be on the move, it wouldn't be that surprising. Xavier Tillman could be someone that's on the move. Zaire Williams, David Roddy, Jake LaRavia. There are numerous players on this Grizzlies roster, almost all of them, excluding Xavier Tillman, are on deals going into next year that Memphis is probably starting to think about from the luxury tax to the first apron, from the first apron to the second apron, what is the best way to rebuild this roster around your core? And if we're assuming that Marcus Smart is a part of the big three core, which is Jaron and John Bain, I think it's fair to assume that at this point. We've seen reports and rumors that teams are calling about the availability of Marcus Smart, and the Grizzlies are rebutting that at every turn. Assuming that Vince Williams Jr., who just signed that extension as part of that future, not including two-way guys like Gigi Jackson because they rarely get traded. We're talking about guys like John Conchar who's under contract over the next several seasons, and that is a deal that could help Memphis get under a luxury tax, enable them to have access to a full mid-level exception, be able to make the kinds of trades and traded player exceptions and do the kinds of things that they're trying to do to build their roster, to find their next big. If you don't think that guy's on the roster, if you believe in Nick Richards, like the Michael and I have talked about before from the Charlotte Hornets, that's going to be someone I'm sure we talk more about in our theorizing of the trade deadline as the time approaches on our Thursday edition of the show. 
whoever that guy is that you're trying to get potentially, if it's not in the draft, there's going to have to be some asset going out. We talked about the Killian Hayes potential on yesterday's show. Killian Hayes from Detroit. If you want to believe in the idea of a second draft, which in the case of Zaire Williams, still a young player, still an impressive frame for someone that's a perimeter-based athlete. If you want to take another shot on that guy and the Grizzlies move on from him in exchange for the team option, basically, on Killian Hayes, and they can let that expire and create more cap room to work with this offseason, or at least space within the luxury tax to have access to other means of trades and signings in the mid-level exception. That matters a lot because that enables a market team like Memphis to be able to improve. It widens the net. It creates more opportunity. Memphis also has additional second round picks. They have control of every first round pick of their own if they want to get a little more aggressive. Does that make sense given the current state of things? I'm not sure it does. And again, on tomorrow's episode, DeMichael and I can talk a little bit more about that together. I think if the right opportunity presents itself, Orlando Magic with Wendell Carter Jr., somebody like that, I think that there's possibilities there. But the Grizzlies are not going to force their hand. They're not going to interrupt the state of play. If they lose every game, I don't know that they care at this stage because it enables them to have a better lottery pick, whether they use that pick or whether they trade it, whatever the case might be, it becomes a more fruitful asset. They're not going to tank. And that's one of the fun things. And I use the word fun loosely. The first three quarters against the New York Knicks was not fun. It felt like you were getting spanked by your father after doing something you weren't supposed to do. Watching it, at least. But that fourth quarter was fun. And if they can stay competitive and put themselves in spots to play entertaining basketball, the wins and losses don't matter at this stage. And it's a little bit freeing in a way, given the year that Memphis Grizzlies fans have endured the expectations and the Moran suspension and the fall from grace to just watch basketball and enjoy it and not necessarily care if they win. Obviously you want your team to win, but there's no race that's being run. There's no chase for a play in spot. You don't have to watch the standings and, and worry, are they going to be able to catch this team or that team? You just go out there and play. But do you look to the future? Do you worry about the money? Do you help someone be a better contender? Luke Kennard's going to garner interest. He may not have as big of a role on a contending team that he has in Memphis, but he has an elite NBA skill. He can shoot the three-point shot. What the Grizzlies got for Steven Adams, I would argue roughly a couple of second-round picks for Luke Kennard? Absolutely. Now, is that worth it? I'll let you be the judge of that, and we'll talk more about that on our Thursday edition of the show. What would I be willing? to part with Luke Kennard for, or John Conjar, or Xavier Tillman. We might get that answer soon enough from the Grizzlies themselves. But this trade deadline, be ready for Grizzlies rumors, be ready for them to be on the periphery. Anytime there's talk of looking for a third team, the Grizzlies are prime real estate for being that team because of the roster flexibility that they both are trying to cultivate and already have in terms of the contracts they possess, the first round pick control, and all of those wonderful things. So it's going to be a fun trade deadline. We're going to talk more about all that on our next episode of Lockdown Grizzlies. I'm looking forward to it. Of course, we'll preview uh, the next Grizzlies basketball game, whoever the heck they're going to be playing on the floor, right? Uh, They'll be playing the Pistons, and and that's one of the funny parts of it, right? How, uh, How will that actually align, right? How will that actually set up? Actually, excuse me, they're not playing the Pistons, my mistake. Uh, They'll be playing the Bulls. Okay, so they're playing the Bulls. Um, Who actually is going to take the floor, right? Will John Conchar still be there? Luke Kennard, all those names we just mentioned. It's going to be worth looking out for. So Grizzlies, Bulls, trade deadline, all that sort of stuff. We'll be talking about that on our next episode. Make sure that you're checking out Locked On Sports Today, the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports today on YouTube. Subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Again, previewing Grizzlies Bulls, talking about a wild trade deadline, the possibilities, all of those sorts of things. Maybe Memphis will have made a trade by then, and we can talk about that. And remember, keep an eye out 
for emergency pods if the Grizzlies make a move of consequence. We had a lot of success with our podcast on Luke Kennard last year. Look for something similar if, a ty- if that type of trade goes down over these next 24 to 48 hours. I appreciate you being with us wherever you're checking us out. Like, comment, rate, review, subscribe, wherever you get your podcasts, also on YouTube. Hopefully you're an everydayer at this point, but if you're not, smash that subscribe button. Check us out each and every time a new episode drops here on Locked On Grizzlies. I am Joe Mullinax. Happy trade deadline eve. Shout out to Taylor Jenkins. You're doing a heck of a job. We'll catch you next time here on Locked On Grizzlies. See you.